the sun is just starting to climb up over the treetops. And it's going to be a beautiful day that's plain to see. Welcome to Bill Dance Outdoors, America's most popular and longest running TV fishing show. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today. Hello everybody, thanks for tuning in. Let me ask you, have you ever wondered why certain areas or objects seem to hold more fish than others year after year? What makes one pier or boat dock better than another? What makes one point better than another? What makes a small section of a tree line, a shoreline, a riprap bank, an isolated stump, a weed bed, a lily pad edge, or whatever, better than all the rest. One thing, deeper water close by, regardless of what it is, structure or cover, more times than not, the most productive will be associated with deeper water. Even when bass are extremely shallow, they'll normally select areas closer to deeper water. And there doesn't have to be a major difference in depth either. Three feet isn't deep but it's a whole lot deeper than one foot. About the only time they'll deviate from this is during the spawning period. Even when bass are deep, they'll select and use those places close to even deeper water when available. Why? It's a built-in instinct, an escape route into deeper water. Oh, baby. Cover he's out now. Tugging fish there. Where are you going? And them all hooked up. under the chin, the chinny chin chin, pretty fish, give me just a second here, we'll get these, this operation done, there we go, look at the color on that one, green, gold, pretty little bass, Toodaloo. I'll lay you right there on that pad and see how long it lasts. You want to, as soon as that water covers you, you're gone. Okay, once you've located the best pattern, now you need to establish a depth. For instance, let's say you've located that ideal boat dock, but how deep are the bass that are using it? Are they shallow, deep, suspended, in close, or out a short distance from it? Or, let's say, you've located that perfect point. Again, how deep should you fish it? See what I mean? Just because you found the ideal object or structure near deeper water, you still gotta fish it at the proper depth to be successful. It's acting funny. through jumping little rascal all right here we go come up here to me there we go bing
Toodaloo. Bill Dance Outdoors is sponsored in part by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Rebel, catch fish anywhere. And by Mercury Marine, go boldly. Today's conditions log is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Finding the right depth is perhaps the single most important factor in bass fishing. If you're not fishing the correct depth, you're really wasting your time. Sure, you might catch a fish here and one there, but you can bet the majority of the fish in the area you're fishing will select and use a preferred depth. Here we go, they like to go onto the boat. Yes, they do. That old spinnerbait just blade just turning. All right, I'm gonna do like the pros do. I'm gonna swing up here, old boy. You ready? There we go. Ouch! That hook hurts. I know it didn't hurt you as much as it hurt me, because you're not bleeding and I am. Nice little fish. He's not as fat as that other one. He's got a little black blotch right there. On his tail, right there. Here, bye-bye. Naturally, the better you know the lake, the easier it's gonna be to establish the correct depth on a given day. But there really isn't an easy way to find the right depth. But here are a few tips that might shorten the time. One is simply by trial and error fishing. Begin trying different depth levels until you catch at least a couple of fish. Then concentrate your time fishing that depth in that particular area. If you change areas to a different part of the lake, you may have to repeat the same procedure. Uh oh, look at here. Where are you going? What are you going to do? Strip my line. There he comes. Right there. Jumping, carrying on, cutting up. Look at that tug. See, every one of them just like to get on that boat. All right, come on back out. You through? Let me come back here where I can play touch with you. All right, we played touch. Let me get that hook out. Toodaloo. Boy, you can smell shit. He has flat been eating shit. Another way to establish depth is ask a boat dock operator or a local fishing guide or even an angler you see on the lake or one who has just returned to the dock. Now, the most important question you can ask is what depth he caught his fish and what area of the lake he's fishing. Not always, but usually most 
will share this information with you. Today's show is sponsored in part by Quantum Rods and Reels. Mystic Lubricants, Lubrication Domination, and Tracker Boats, Fish the Finest. Today's show is sponsored in part by Stren, the standard of dependability since 1958. Lurlock, turning the tackle world upside down. And Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. Today's equipment log is brought to you in part by LureLock. Their TackLogic technology locks your terminal tackles safely into place. 100% made in America. LureLock, revolutionizing the way you fish. Tell you what, let's look at this fancy little job that I'm using today that these shallow water bass are so fond of. It's Bass Pro Shop's Laser Eye Pro Series Spinnerbait. Everything about this lure is high end with only premium components. Living silicone skirt, a slip on perfect skirt with a collar, memory resistant stainless steel wire, a smooth ball bearing swivel that spins the slightest bit of movement, mirror blades that shine like a new nickel, laser eyes that really get a fish's attention, razor sharp hook that'll stick you just looking at it, and we've got this one fixed up with a trailer hook, and let me tell you, this is one great bait. Now, I don't know how many fish this one has caught in the past, but today I know I've caught over 40 bass on it. And I'd be willing to bet it wants to get out there and catch some more. This is a pretty fish. You through? Looks like he's a little bit too heavy to swing. Come here. A pretty fish. Double hooks you didn't. That hadn't missed many meals, has he? Another key way to establish depth is perhaps the best of all. And that's relying on this little fellow right here. This unit will not only show you depth, it'll show you fish and which depth they're using, and even the cover they're positioned in. There are two areas of shad minutes here right now. These schools are moving across this long, shallow flat point in a depth of about three feet. Here, all I'm doing is fan casting the area. I've dropped my power pole and I'm casting out into about five feet of water, letting the spinnerbait free fall to the bottom and slow rolling it back. Now most of the hits are coming out of about three feet of water. Another key location is where a shallow point extends out to an old slough that's basically filled in and formed a depression. Here, the shad menace travel this slightly deeper fertile channel. And bass are here too, relating to only the key irregular feature, a small point that extends out to the depression. Real, Bill, real. See what happened? When you start to get to be hoggish, he is down in that stuff so deep. I don't want to lose my spinnerbait. Yeah, that's been a good bait. Now he's on there. Look at here. Boy, you little rascal. You 
We're just telling them right up there on the surface. Watch it. Thought you were cool, didn't you? All right, here we go, right on the pad. There you go. Bill's question and answer of the week is brought to you by LureLock. Our durable tackle boxes will protect your prize lures and make organization fun and easy. LureLock, revolutionizing the way you fish. There's no doubt the fine line we put on our reels can be the most important part of our equipment. But we're only as good as this connection. And this is why we should always use a quality line and check it periodically at the knot and 12 to 14 inches from the knot. Run your line through your fingers and feel for nicks, abrasions, and wear and tear. Side check your knot. If there's any doubt, re -tie. Today's show is sponsored in part by Millennium Marine, a new class of comfort. And Motor Guide, trolling motors engineered for anglers. Closed captioning provided by Power Pole, the original shallow water anchor. Today's product tip is brought to you by Garmin and their GPS map series, chart plotter sonar combos. With advanced sonar technology like Chirp and exclusive Panoptics all-seeing sonar, you'll spend less time finding your fish. A new kind of lure box that lets you drop everything and lose nothing. People have accused me of being scatterbrained, but if I happen to drop this box, the only thing that's scattered is me. They come in three sizes. Get you one, get you two, or better than that, get them all. Come be a part of Bill Dance Digital. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Follow us. Out of pads. A little one. Well, now I've got you all hooked up. Okay, listen. <clears throat> listen up, Zona. This is this is for you, Mark. I want you to pay close attention to what I'm fixing to say. You got that? Okay. I can't emphasize enough. The best fisherman around can fish. And I said the best fisherman around. I didn't say you. You're a good fisherman, but I want you to listen. The best fisherman around can fish the best bait in the world. And if he's fishing the wrong depth, he's not going to catch many fish. But at the right depth, almost anyone can catch fish. And that includes you, Mark provided he's fishing the right location with the proper lure for that location and using the correct presentation. The depth chosen by fish at any given time is dictated by, you know, just a whole bunch of things like uh, food supply, oxygen content, water temperature, the time of day, even the time of the year. Once you discover the idea of depth, you must then learn the very best location in the area of the lake you're fishing at that depth. It could be a point, a ledge, a high spot, a sloping bank, or it could be a merged, like a boat dock, bushes, vegetation, or standing timber. It's important to remember that whatever depth and location you fish, don't forget it. It needs to be deeper water close by. No, I didn't say deep water, I said deeper water. All we're really talking about here is what the majority of fish are doing at the same time in a preferred depth and location. Lay on that pad. Go, see ya. <laughs>
Once a depth and location is found, naturally, you'll have to select a lure that can be fished effectively there. Regardless of what lure you choose, a worm, crankbait, grub, spinnerbait, or whatever, it must be fished in a way that's most appealing, especially when bass are inactive. Crazy. Yes, sir, that's a good one. I didn't think that fish was that big. Where are you going? Oh. Alrighty. You know, when I think back to where I've caught most of my biggest bass, both largemouth and smallmouth, is where I've caught a great number of fish also. That is where a depth change occurs. Sometimes it's shallow, sometimes deep. So, if you're having some trouble catching your fair share of bass, you might just want to get next to deeper water. No doubt in my mind, it'll make a big difference. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time somewhere between the shoreline and open water. See ya. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today. Thanks for watching Bill Dance Outdoors. Join us here again next week. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today.